Well, good morning. And welcome to this James with Jesus on Monday, March 14th. Um, scripture I selected for this morning is the first chapter of 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you that the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us, we declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. I was thinking about this this morning. Um, I don't know how I got on it. <laughs> Something to do with daylight savings time. But just, um, you know, I, I used to, Rael, Renee knows this, I've told her several times. Uh, Rael, when I was a teen, against this confession that we had in the Lutheran church, it says, we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. And I was thinking like, no, no, I can free myself. Um, I wasn't literally rebelling against the savior per se, as much as just overestimating my abilities by a long shot. Um, as you go through life a little bit, you see systems at work that you know, make you scratch your head and think, uh, why is this the way it is? And maybe that's how I got to daylight savings time. Maybe the folks who love it just stay quiet about it <laughs> because it seems like every time we come to changing the clocks, I hear uh, nothing but grumbling um, and people understand that maybe it's historical development and something had to do with farming communities, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it seems to me almost like the QWERTY keyboard, a relic of the past that no longer serves us well. And I, for one, <laughs> would like to go on the record that rolling the clocks back, making it darker, and then throwing in a cold snap tends to make me a little bit grumpier than happier. Just as we were heading towards spring in a nice trajectory, it's like you get a little smack in the face. So truthfulness uh, both ways. Uh, the other thing is just recognizing that there are certain things that feel like they're so far beyond our control. How can I change daylight savings time? Well, I guess I could add my name to a petition as people have brought up recommendations to stop doing it, but it um, seems almost as inevitable as the tide coming in, but maybe not. So when I have those types of feelings, it helps me to reground myself in things that I am able to do. And so I was invited by John Fulmer to work with he and Pastor Chris on installing some windows as part of the Shaw Center ongoing work. This is not um, University Lutheran's project per se, because um, we wrapped up our first one last year and are looking forward to maybe joining a second one this year. But this is just helping out with a fellow uh, congregation in some of the work that they're doing. So a very tangible expression projects like this, what's nice is that you have a bad window before you got there, you have a good window when you leave there, you know you've positively impacted somebody's life, and that's a, always a good feeling. Tonight, I will not be able to make a meeting because I'm double booked, but in Central, it's a very important meeting. Uh, Eunice Lehmacher has been working with local hand, land, local property owner, as well as um, tenants and, and homes uh, on a 14-acre tract of land just past the Clemson line. Um, and the developer, or the, or sorry, the owner uh, would like to sell the property. 
because they said they're as they continue to age they're not as interested in being a landlord uh, down the road and it's been very hopeful that that property can remain in good hands where tenants can stay on the property etc but the pressures for development are are great and so uh, the city of clemson has a new mayor so things um, you know you kind of want to get your feet underneath you but nevertheless at the meeting tonight 6 p.m hopefully there'll be a lot of uh, community support out there saying there's got to be a good way to truly make everybody happy i i've worked in commercial real estate and know there's oftentimes those scenarios where you can create the win-win-win and everybody is happy sometimes it takes a lot of creativity sometimes it takes some patience sometimes it takes some sacrifice by the various parties not getting 100 percent of what they've liked but at least not economically but I've seen a lot of transactions go through where people felt good about them. And that's an intangible that you just can't put a dollar on to say, uh, you can still make, you know, I'm not speaking to anything specific to the central situation. I'm going back into my own, my own history. You can still make a fair profit on what you're doing and feel great about doing it. And the buyer feels great about being involved. You as a broker felt great about being able to bring people together. So uh, it's a false construct to think that somebody has to lose in order for you to get a good deal. And so my hope there is that there'll be a lot of good support, that people will come together, that people can um, come up with a good way to resolve that so that, uh, so that that 14 acres won't be just turned over to, um, won't displace I think 30 families and you know, that, that People can keep staying in their homes that want to stay in their homes. It's part of the, it's part of the work that Shaw Center is doing, uh, and it's part of the proposal that's going on for the meeting for Central. So, um, so say a prayer for that meeting tonight. You don't have no specifics because I can't give you much more than I have other than to simply say, Lord, help us be good neighbors one to another. Um, well, shoot, let me just pray. Good and gracious God, thanks for this new day. Um, even if it came an hour earlier than we've been used to a few days ago. We pray for the meeting at Central this evening, that truly neighbors can hear one another, that there can be a spirit of creativity and cooperation such that everybody can come away, the city, the land owner, um, the people who live on the property, uh, can all come away with a, uh, a plan that can be uh, workable for all all folks. We give you thanks for the many ways that people in this community continue to reach out to help one another. We give you thanks for the reception for the Afghan refugees. Um, we pray for um, the ongoing needs for food and shelter and give you thanks for the many, many generous people um, uh, doing your work. So help us this day, be attentive to those things that may be beyond our scope, that we can offer up prayers and, and uh, learn more, and then be able to uh, act upon those things that we are able, using the gifts and talents that you've uh, given to us or entrusted to us, and those things that we've worked on in our lifetime to develop uh, further skills. We ask and pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you have a blessed day today, and then uh, Pastor Josh will be with you tomorrow morning, where I think it's going to be a little bit warmer than 34 degrees. So, have a great day. Bye-bye.